As you know, I'm Kyneton the Tech Pro, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Visual Studio for Mac OS on your system and build a REST API in a very short time. Now, if you look at my screen, you see that I have Visual Studio right here. You can see Visual Studio. And now this is very important because many people are using Mac OS and they don't know how easy it could be to have Visual Studio in Mac and actually you don't have to worry about setting up virtual machine or going to get a Windows system. You can actually do it in Mac and it's really very convenient and very easy as well. So let me just show you what to do. So we are going to just download it, install it and build a REST API that returns a list of items very quickly. So let me shift to behind my screen so that I can just take some time to do it. Okay, so I'm behind my screen right now. And the first thing I would like to do is to um, go to Visual Studio. Visual Studio. Uh, so if you type Visual Studio, sorry, let me just bring down this so you can see my face. So if you type Visual Studio, you can see a number of things. So simply go to Downloads. Um, from Downloads, you can look for community, oh sorry, you can go down right here, you can see Visual Studio Code and you see Visual Studio for Mac. Simply click on the free download because it's also free. It's more or less like community edition free. So you can easily use it. And I recommend if you are using a Mac OS, this is very fast. Visual Studio is really very, very fast if you are using it in Mac. I've used it on Windows for many years. Now I'm using it on Mac to do everything I want to do. And it's really very convenient. And once you download it, simply install the D uh, run the DMG file and install it in your system. And once you install it, it appears right here on the list of applications right here. So let's go ahead to quickly build an API that returns a list of items. And also, as I normally say, please subscribe to my channel because when you subscribe, you kind of motivate me to keep making these lessons for you. And also I want to um, have people I can also talk with in case you have any challenges, please let me know. All right, so let's start building an API right now and it's going to take very few minutes. So I'm going to click on Visual Studio for Mac so it opens up. Meanwhile, let me just, uh, okay, leave this. So it opens up on another window. So let me just, yeah, so this is where it is. I've been playing around with it. So I'm going to say new. <coughs> so I'm going to click on new and it comes up here. And it shows me recently used because I recently used uh, this. But for you, what you are going to select is to go down one step to app to app. Okay, so from app, you can see a number of items and simply click on API and go next. Meanwhile, for, don't forget to leave it at C sharp unless you want to use F sharp. So leave it at C sharp and go next. And if you go next, it tells you .NET Core. Uh, now it's .NET 5.0, so we use .NET Core because that is the latest. Uh, for now, it's a demo, so we don't need anything about authentication. So I'm going, I'm going next. I'm going to call it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just call it API. Uh, so give me one sec. So it just called it AP. So, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to call it API demo. So, but whatever the name you give it, uh, remember this name. So it opens up something like this. It's quite blank. Nothing is showing up, but I'm going to tell you something. If you drop down this and you see a number of things, I'm going to just run this application and let's see what comes back. So I'm going to click on this run button right here and take note of what happens. This is really very interesting. It scaffolds everything and tells you exactly what is happening. So this is like magic. So it, it's running and we have a list of items returned. <coughs> API has been built with nothing. And now the interesting thing is that a Mac like this, it is very fast, it is really super fast to use. So you can see API set up. Now, if you want to build, create a list of items, you can just follow the, the, the one that already has been created automatically. So let's simply go to create a list of friends, a API that returns a list of friends. So let's go back to Visual Studio. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to right click and just add a class. I'm going to say add and choose new class and I'm going to call it friend like this. So this friend is going to have first name and last name. So let's just keep it our first name, last name and location. <coughs> so I'm going to say public. Sorry, just a second. Just, uh, 
pick out these. Okay, so we have public frame. This one constructor that has been given to us. So I'm going to create the the attribute. So I'm going to say public. It can also be private. So no, this is a demo. So I'm going to say public. Um, uh, public string. First name. Public string last name and public string location all right so we have three attributes and now i'm going to generate the getters and the set uh, i'm going to generate uh, actually um, i missed out something so you simply say because you don't need to do the getters and setters manually so i'm going to say get and say set all right so this is what you are going to do so that makes makes life a, a lot easier when you are using uh, .NET to build uh, APIs, so I don't have to do Lombok and all these stops. All right, so I have my getters and setters. I have empty constructor. I want to create a an all acts constructor. So I'm going to right click here and say quick actions and refactoring, and I'm going to choose generate constructor. I'm going to select everything and say okay, and it generates my constructor for me. I hope the I hope the font size is okay. I hope you can see it clearly. If not, I really don't want to spend time going to increase. I think you can increase the size from preferences and go to fonts and maybe um, to change something. But I don't think. Uh, let's see. Choose this one. Maybe make it fourteen or something. So okay. Say okay. So I think this is fine. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, so it increased a little bit. Now, how do we now expose this, uh, this as a list of items that goes to the URL? Because right now, if I go back to the URL, I have weather forecast. This weather forecast is this one, and the controller is right here. So we need one controller, but all this gap, all these things here that looks complex, don't worry about it. Ours will really be very easy. So what you're gonna do now is to simply go to, um, now we have our class, this is fine. I'm gonna control that. I'm gonna right click and say, add new scaffolding. And I'm going to just call it API controller empty. So I'm going to say next. And I'm gonna call it friend, all right? So I'm going to say finish. So it takes a few seconds and it creates this controller for us. Now I want to create a list of items, a list of frames, and then return it. Okay, so I think it's done. Okay, so it takes some time, so let's give it a second. Okay, succeeded. So I'm going to open my controller. So it created the basic things for us. So I'm going to simply come here and say, public list of frames, list of frames, I'm going to call it get friends. So it like is giving us very excellent intelligence. And here we want to return a list of items. So it's complaining because it needs us to uh, return list of items. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to create a new list, a new list of friends. I'm going to call it friends. So AR, AR, uh, Visual Studio is really super cool. Uh, to use, <laughs> so, so I'm going to say uh, is equal to new list of friends. So let's say we have new list. I'm initializing it to three items in the list, and I'm going to create add new three new friends to this list. So I'm going to say friends dot add. So sorry, is friends dot add. I'm going to say uh, new friend and specify the first name, Kainson, and the last name, uh, my last name, and my location is Budapest, all right? All right, so I've added one item, so permit me to just copy and paste and just modify things a little bit. So I'm gonna just copy and paste. Okay, so you paste right here. So I'm going to paste again right here. So let me just change this one to Helene. I'm going to change this one to uh, Grow School and stays in Australia. 
And I'm going to change this one to Yanni. Oh, I'm going to change this to Lawrence. And this stays in Lagos. Okay, so we have uh, three items and now we've added all these items to our array, to our list, a friends list. And I'm going to return it right now by saying return friends. Guys, how easy this is. Our API is ready. How do we now check whether, it's, whether it works? So first I'm going to stop this from running and I'm going to run it again. First I'm going to save files, save everything, save all, and I'm going to run. So when I run it now, I can, find, I can now assess the list of friends. Now it takes us back to the original API. So if I go to, if I go to friends, you can see nothing happens because you can see that it tells us API slash. So the base URL says API. So slash API slash the name of your controller. In this case, it's a French controller. So I'm going to say API slash friend. And now we have our list of friends right here. So permit me to just make it a little better. Okay. So we have our list of friends returned right here. So this is how easy it is to build API in the night. Now there are questions you might ask. How do we do posts? How do we put, do puts? How do we do delete? Now these are very easy. They can be actually generated while you have your model. That is a friends object you created. Interestingly, .NET allows us to also generate the page that does everything for us with all the buttons and everything scaffolded very easily. So I'm going to show you. So if I right click and I say add new scaffolding, you see a number of things that can be used. But I don't want to make this video too long. In the subsequent videos, we now dive right in to now see how we can do post, put and delete and how we can generate, actually generate instead of writing the code. So I'm going to be stopping here. The idea now or the summary that you've learned how to set up Visual Studio in Mac, how to create a basic REST API, and how to actually run the Visual Studio application in Mac. So I'm going to stop here. In the next part, we continue. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Like and share, and also leave me a comment if this has been informative for you. Remember, I'm kind on the Tech Pro, and I'm always there for you.